So I was doing a little bit of work with this little guy, and um, I got to thinking, if you remember the video that I did before where I was talking about the, uh, the overheating issues uh, on this side, uh, where nothing over here gets cold and everything over here gets, you know, super cold. Um, I got to thinking, if you remember, I, I removed the, the Penny MD out of it and put a Core 2 Quad in its place just so that we could see the CPU temperatures. And that got me thinking. We always talk about the TDP differences, and that's not super accurate. How much difference is there in the actual power draw between a Penny MD and a Core 2 Quad and a Core 2 Duo and, and et cetera? Um, you know, what's the difference? So I figure, just for the heck of it, let's just do a quick video comparing the actual power draw between all of them. So, let's take a look. Okay, now, before we get started, I just want to mention that I disconnected the PWM wire and all the fans. That way, they all run at full speed, and we have a constant power draw. So first up, let's just check the power draw without a CPU. Now, this isn't a perfect test, because I'm sure there are parts of the motherboard that won't fully fire up without a CPU, but it gives us an idea. And it seems that this PC without a CPU has a 37 watt power draw at the plug. Alright, first, let's try a Pentium 4 631 3 GHz. Now, going back and watching, I noticed the lowest idle wattage was 57 watts. Now, this is straight from the outlet. I'm going to use CPU-Z's built-in benchmark and stress test. Maybe not the greatest, but again, it'll just give us an idea. And well... This Pentium 4's wattage maxed out at 90 watts, and it scored 132.4 points. Okay, well, that's a start. Let's move to a Pentium D. This one's a 2.8 GHz, 915, and well, after watching the footage, it seems like the lowest wattage was 88. That's the max of the Pentium 4, and this is just idling at 88 watts. Oh, but it gets better. While running the benchmark, it maxed out at 155 watts and scored 176.3. The Pentium 4 scored 132, so that's a 28% performance difference with a 74% increase in power usage. Okay, let's go one better. A Pentium D945 at 3.4 gigahertz. Now this one, in watching the footage, I noticed it dropped down to 70 watts at idle. When benched, it ran up to the same as the other, 155 watts. But this time around, it scored 202 points. Okay, moving on to the Core 2s. This one's a Duo 4300 at 1.8 gigahertz. Right off the bat, you can see it uses far less power, and it seems to idle down around 46 watts. And when maxed out, it topped out around 69 watts. That's lower than either of the D's idle wattages, and it scored 311.3 points in the benchmark. About 110 points higher than the Pentium D 3.4. Now we got the Core 2 Duo 2.2 E4500, and it's pretty much the same as its little brother, the 4300. Similar minimum of 47 watts, and it maxed out at 72 watts. Only a few more, but it scored a bit higher at 360 points. Now, let's do everyone's favorite quad, the Q6600 at 2.4 gigahertz. Now, I'd love to overclock this or even use faster quads in this test, but this board doesn't support them. It only has an 800 megahertz frontside bus. But this quad idles at around 53.4 watts, only about six watts higher than the last duo. And it maxes out at 124 watts, which is still lower than the D's. But what's crazy is its score of 849.5. That's a 320% performance increase when compared to the D3.4, and it's still using less power. And of course, we have to do it. Let's take a look at the Celeron. This is a Celeron D331 at 2.66 gigahertz. I love how they add that extra digit. It's not a 2.6, it's a 2.66. But yeah, this, this one idles at 63 watts and it maxes out at 109. Uh, that's higher than the Pentium 4 and it only scored 80.7 points. Looking over all the results, you can see a few things. One, the Celeron was a 90 nanometer die. So yeah, it used more power. Now, Intel claims the TDP of the Celeron is 84 watts, while the TDP of that Pentium 4 is 86. But when we check how much power it actually uses, it's reversed. The Celeron uses more, as you would expect for the die size. You can also see how much power those Pentium Ds used. Uh, the idle wattage is up around the peak wattage for the Duo. Now, let's throw in the benchmark results. Yeah, it's no contest. Now, this isn't to say if you're you know interested and you've never played with a Pentium D to not do it definitely go for it. Have fun. I've said it before, it's sort of like driving a beat-up, super underpowered five-speed Econobox. Yeah, it's slow, but man, is it fun to go wide open, slamming through the gears, redlining every one of them, and not even coming anywhere close to breaking the speed limit. It's sort of the same idea here, just not as exciting. 
But anyways, that's it. Just a quick vid. I am working on some other stuff, so I'll see you next time. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.